Charlotte is your friend, she's your closest friend. Yeah. You have to have this conversation, but it never went anywhere in fact. So yeah, he never absolutely. never mentioned it to Chris. He never said anything about your kids or his kids, pardon me, damaging your guys' relationship. No. Or on August twelfth, according to phone records, Miss Kessinger tells her friend Charlotte about Watts for the first and only time. The next day, on August 13th, Chris Watts' family disappears, never to be seen again. Right. So, in light of what's occurred, though, what I'm trying to make sure is that there was never a conversation that you guys had that he might have thought that you um, were saying, I can't be with you if you have kids. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be with him if I couldn't. Okay. So if I'm just can. making 100% sure that those. I promise you. Okay. Like, well, I really want you to pull well these texts because all the stuff I've been telling you will, like, okay. think of. And I hope we can. I haven't been very lucky with your partner. Yeah, this was because she put it in your head or asked you to. Or, or, never, I mean, this whole this whole relationship contributed to it, sure. But she never, it never. She okay. didn't want. Kids. Wait, was it ever like I wish you didn't have kids? I want to have, you know, kids of my own with you. Like she wants. I mean, she never knew if she wanted to have kids, but she said that you know, at one point she said I'd like to give you a son. What did she know that Shanann was pregnant with a boy? No. Did she know Shanann was pregnant? No. And why is that? You just didn't tell her? I didn't know. Like, because we had met. But she didn't put that on Facebook. That's, that's, like, that's how did she I, not see that? I don't know. Maybe she didn't. She just waited for me to tell her or she put it out of her head. On July 14th, Shanann posted this picture to Facebook. Bought Baby Watts, first outfit. July 14th is the same day. Miss Kessinger and Watts went to the Mustang Museum and returned to his house where... Ms. Kessinger saw a picture of Shanann and one of the girls. She reports that she then tried to convince him to stay with his wife, but he reports she went a little ballistic. It's that same day, Ms. Kessinger told Watts that she'd like to give him his first son. Yeah, some stuff. Um, 
so much for coming out here with me, Christopher. I'm having a wonderful time. You mean a lot to me. And I'm glad that you're having a blast. I am so out of breath. Hi. like do you have 401k and he was like yeah and i mean the reason i ask him this is because if i get in a relationship with somebody i want to know like what kind of baggage that they have i think that's important if i walk into a situation where i'm like hey i have good credit and i have all these things and i have all these things and i have all these things 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 and i have all these things that i can't tell you like the exact words of the exact conversation at the exact time and place, because it's like, we had a lot of conversations. I mean, we talked every single day. So it's so like, a- I'm trying to help you guys with the stuff, like the stuff that's more current. I can give you guys a lot more like detail and exact times. But when you're asking me about something that happened six weeks ago and exactly what was said, it's like, I mean, I'm sure I can give you a general idea, but to be honest with you, like to pinpoint exact words, it's not going to happen. I'm not. Wow, that woman can talk. You know, I can talk a lot and I can talk fast. And some of you might have such similar talents, but Miss Kessinger, man, she is our girl. She is our girl for the marathon. Speaky, speaky. <laughs> so, hello, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome. And thank you for being here, everybody who is in chat and moderators. Thank you so, so, so much. You guys are awesome. You're always here. I just can't believe you guys keep showing up. And Molson Man, Molson Man, I was asked to stop singing your name, Molson Man, but I can't do it. I don't know if Curious Rose sent you (laughs) the message I sent, and I'm sorry, person who doesn't like that or people who don't like that. I just, I can't do it. I have to sing Molson Man. So welcome everybody who is here, and I noticed that somebody said it was their first live stream, and oh, let's see. Diane said, um, hi, Kelly, you have an awesome channel. Thank you so much. As I hit subscribe, I heard you're in upstate New York. Oh, my deaf son graduated from RTI. 
works on computers. All things are possible. Thanking God. That is absolutely amazing. I don't know if you know what I do um, for a living. I work with, I'm a special educator. I specialize in applied behavioral analysis. And um, I work with students with a number of um, learning developmental disabilities and, you know, other things that are like extra challenges. I don't like to limit myself to any of those statements that um, I just gave you there, but that's pretty awesome. And hi, Mel Mel. Did you email me earlier? Welcome. Are you the person who said this is your first live stream? Welcome. So we have a pretty long list of people. So I am going to, um, oh gosh, hi everybody. Kathy Williams, welcome. Cecile, Curious Rose, Anaphylaxis, Ara, ADHD, Mitch Atkins, welcome. Utter Nutter, um, Molson Moon. I, can't, I just have to do it. <laughs> um, hi, Ara. And ah, Roxana, welcome. Nice to see you here. And Jennifer Bradford. Um, and I was asked by a lot of people, hi, Edward, how are you to pare down the intro? So I'm trying to do this really fast. I do like to say hello to people though. Um, you know, I just do, you guys are great. My ADHD life. Hi, Sherry Claiborne. How are ya? Greetings from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where I have lots of family and Kathy Williams. I'm getting you again. And, um, if I do miss someone and I might, I'm sorry, just say hello and I'll say hi back. Hi, Mel Mel, again. <laughs> um, and Curious Rose, my darling. Isn't she such a great um, featured guest on the channel? And how's your son doing these days, by the way, Diane? That's pretty amazing. Hi, Green Eyes. I'm glad you were able to make another live stream. And oh, Hoop, ta hoop, oh, hoop, hoop Static. What a great name. What a great name. Hi, Holly S. Welcome back. Hi, Amy. How are you? Welcome to the channel. Nice to see you. Hello, Gail. Welcome back. And okay, so, all right, so this live stream is going to be about, hi, Jody is cool, how are you? And Aussie girl, Jen, oh, my girls. And is Keschik here? I owe Keschik a longer email. You guys are so great. I'm so happy that you're part of the channel. Aussie girl, Jen, Jody is cool, and Keschik. Um, I know Keschik moderates for another channel, well, my friend Armchair Detective, which is awesome, but I consider you part of this channel as well. Um, let's see here. And, you know, we've all bonded on some points. So Sandy, hi, Sandy, how are you? Sandy says, I have respect for anyone who works with kids with issues. Oh, thank you. My son had them all hyperactive, real hyperactive. I know what you mean, because there's a difference between hyperactive and real hyperactive. I get that. ADHD, learning disabled, and Tourette's. Wow, on top of all of that. But he has gotten to grow up. That's amazing. And I'm, I'm imagining that he must have had an awesome mom and some great educators along the way. So that's that's really great. So give it up to all of our amazing educators, including RR. Is anyone else here an educator? I'm just curious. Hi, Bev Webster. Bev, bleh, Bev Webster. I needed to slow down for that one. And a face in the crowd. Welcome, guys. How are you doing? Um, and okay. So during the last live stream, um, let's see. Um, let's see. We were talking about, uh, well, a number of things, and it was kind of an open-ended theme that was opening up to, you know, a QA. and a A Curious Rose joined us, and she and I were um, answering some questions and giving our perspective on things and trying to, you know, get a feel for what your perspective on some, some certain issues is or was you know, these things can be ever evolving. So in the process of doing that, we got into the text message exchange between Chris Watts, former mistress, Miss Kessinger, and her, well, self-proclaimed BFF, Charlotte Nelson. Hi, Raven. Welcome. How are you doing? Oh, Amy, you're a middle school teacher. Awesome. I taught um, middle school special ed. Um, particularly algebra, well, be pre-algebra, right, um, for three years. And then I got to uh, transition with those kids into the high school. It was pretty cool. I love doing that. Hi, squirrel friend. How are you? Oh, I'm so glad that you made a lot. Yay. Squirrel friend is in the his house. Everyone say hello. Um, so now, as I had been researching over the past I guess month or two, you know, we're always looking, well, this channel is at least, is always looking at um, issues surrounding Chris Watts, former mistress, and 
you know, what evidence is or is not out there to implicate her or to not implicate her. And guys, I really am not attached to one or the other. As time has gone on, I, due to the evidence and the research and, you know, other people's findings and sort of the my own conclusions that I have come to have led me to believe with greater and greater certainty that she had some involvement to some degree. Now, I'm not saying that I can place her at the scene of the crime. And it's not that I want to place her at the scene of the crime. It's not that at all. I don't know if we can place her at the scene of the crime. In fact, with the evidence we have right now, I'm going to say there is not evidence to place her at the scene of the crime. Is John McSmith in the house? Because he would like that statement. <laughs> but I think there is an abundance of evidence that shows she had some claim to this crime that I believe rises to the level of criminal culpability. Now, I've explained that before um, in live streams and a number of videos. I'm not going to get into that super fully now. Um, I can refer you to some of the videos that explain that thoroughly because I anything that I say, you know, is a certain statement like that, I will back it up. Hello, Pray for Peace. What a beautiful name. Oh, I'm so happy you found the channel too. I love that name. Beautiful name. Welcome. So happy you're here. Um, I pray for peace too. We all should, right? It's a crazy world we live in, guys. Um, so, huh. During, uh, so we, I've, we've always all been looking at issues surrounding Chris Watts, former mistress, Tataquito, formerly known as dun, 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 Miss Nicole Kessinger, right? Now, over the past two months or so, I've been doing more focused and kind of deep dive research, looking at some issues surrounding Miss Kessinger. As I, um, you know, embarked on this mission to create the Nicole Kessinger document documentary, which I've put part one of out, um, that focuses on only the facts as they exist about Miss Kessinger. So in the process of doing that, what I ended up really focusing on, because I thought that there was just a ton of things to look at, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that fall under this theme is the Chris Watts' former mistress, who is NK, her personal timeline on Sunday and Monday, August 12th and August 13th. So the day before the murders and the day of the murders. So, I mean, you can even really go back to Saturday the 11th. So that's when um, Chris Watts and his former mistress went out to dinner at the Lost Dog Cafe when Chris Watts used his baby blue credit card rather than those prepaid Anandarko cards that, oh, it's controversial whether he was truly out of them or was he using, oh, John McSmith is in the house. Welcome, John. Or was he using that baby blue credit card, which, of course, was connected to a credit card account there was a joint account, welcome Papa B, between um, Chris Watts and his wife, Shanann Watts. Now, many think, and we were discussing this last live stream, that it's possible that he used that credit card knowing that Shanann would receive the notification that he used this credit card for such and such amount, that she would know that the amount that he paid, which was like 60 some odd dollars, was was more than a beer and an entree would cost at the Lazy Dog Cafe, where obviously, you know, the, the credit card receipt would show that's where the charges were made. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, at, okay. So that was Saturday. And then Sunday, you know, we have Miss Kessinger not remembering what she did. Um, and then we have the strange pattern of communications between Miss Kessinger and Christopher Watts that Sunday evening, August 12th, the evening before the murders, that includes 
the 111 minute conversation of which neither Ms. Kessinger nor Chris Watts can remember a damn thing about. Shady, yes. Now, we've talked about at length um, the fact that that 111 minute phone conversation was far out of their normal pattern of conversing on the phone. In fact, I found by you know, scrutinizing over the phone records that the next three longest calls were 51 minutes, 52 minutes, and 54 minutes, respectively. So 51, 52, 54, that's all under an hour. The 111 minute phone conversation, you know, if we do a little math, is, you know, just nine minutes shy of two hours. Never had they had a conversation even close to that long, not even close to 111 minutes. So the fact that that conversation was so long, it was outside of their normal pattern of communicating and conversing on the phone and still, and it happened on the eve of this horrific triple plus homicide that cost Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and unborn baby Nico the rest of their lives. Such a terrible, tragic thing. You know, so the fact that she couldn't remember any of it. He couldn't remember any of it. Hi, Debbie McLean. How are you? And that when, when they were asked about that call by law enforcement, they responded in a way that used much of the same language and sort of strained verbiage that was didn't seem natural to their flow of conversation. Well, guess what? The next activity on Ms. Kessinger's phone after the 111-minute phone conversation that ended at I think it was 11.19 p.m. Sunday evening, the evening before the murders, just before Shanann was supposed to get home when she was returning from Arizona. But remember, her flight was delayed. The next activity on Miss Kessinger's phone was the very suspicious and now infamous, if you follow this case at all, 616 a.m. ping in Frederick, Colorado, the morning of the murders, just minutes after Chris Watts' truck left his driveway, as we all assume, can safely assume, with the body of Shanann, Bella, and Celeste in tow. Such a sad story. And, you know, it... I should give a blanket trigger warning because anytime we're talking about this case, guys, it's hard stuff to talk about, right? Hi, Tia Marie. Welcome. How are you doing, sweetheart? Um, okay, so, so again, we're talking about Chris Watts' former mistress timeline, Sunday and Monday, the eve and the day of the murders, right? So then stranger things happen the day of the murders, like... Chris Watts tells his mistress when they're on the phone Sunday night, presumably in that 111 minute conversation of which neither of them remember a damn thing. So he tells her, yeah, um, and Pinata, I'm uh, not coming into the office tomorrow morning. Sweet little taquito con queso. Um, I, and by the way, Chris Watts, one of his pet names for her was my sexy empanada. So that's where all of this um, Mexican food talk comes from, in case you're wondering. Um, it's just, I guess, my way of keeping some a topic that's completely not light, having a little levity. And please don't think I'm making light of it because I never, never, it's, it's not light at all. Um, so he tells her, you know, I'm not coming into the office. I'm going straight out to the field, right? And she gives three different accounts to law enforcement each account being very different with increasing um, alarm to the fact that, oh, he was going out to the field and not coming into the office. The first time she talked to law enforcement, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, that happens. Sometimes the guys are there. Sometimes they're not. Eh, you know, I go and I walk my lunch to the refrigerator and, you know, it's like how it is. Right. And by the, her third account, when she's talking to Kevin Kobach for all three of these accounts, she's recalling how it's very strange that he was going straight out to the field 
And the reason he was going straight out to the field was to check on an oil release, which is oil industry talk for, uh uh-oh, there's like some kind of a leak. Um, And she, now remember, Nicole Kessinger is a geologist by study, and she is employed as a health and safety personnel who supports, you know, health and safety procedures and structures for the guys who go out to the field, um, including Chris Watt's team. So as her stories go on, these three stories of all, she's very alarmed. Oh, you know, he wouldn't be going out there by himself. You know, that would have to be an environmental specialist. Oh, you know, this is totally strange. And in fact, Kevin Kobach, it's so strange that I asked him to prove where he was. Now, something very interesting that we found on this channel um, that happened through the course of following up on her story about, you know, how it's so strange that he went straight out to the field. It was so strange. In fact, I demanded proof was that she's telling Kevin Kobach in a very detailed manner. She asked for proof. He says, what can I send you, little taquito, that will suffice as proof? And she gives him like a couple options. And after telling law enforcement at least four times, I think it's five. I've lost count of this detail. I have it in my notes somewhere. It's four or five times. She says, we did not talk during the day on what she calls Murder Monday. Tacky, I know. I'm sorry. It's her words. Um, We didn't talk during the day. We didn't talk until after work later that evening. Well, she slips and she tells Kevin Kobach, well, yeah, you know, he sent me this and this. And, you know, I was like looking at it and I was still on the phone with him. I hadn't even hung up. I was still on the phone with him. And so she herself gave it up that they actually did speak on the phone during that morning, the morning of what she calls Murder Monday when she had been denying that again and again and again to law enforcement. Hi, Hochi Winner. Welcome. How are you? Joan, hi. How are you, sweetheart? Welcome. Um, Now, is it such a big deal that she talked to her lover um, during the workday? No, of course it's not. But is it a big deal that that day happened to be the day that Chris Watts' beautiful wife and his two amazing, beautiful children went missing. And we later found out that they were murdered and she had denied it at least four times. Is it a big deal then when we find out that she was in fact on the phone with him during the day? Yeah, I think it is. What do you guys think? So as I and we all together, because you guys are contributors and a huge part of looking into all this and researching this. You guys are always sending me things, giving me great feedback. I thank you so much. So as we were all investigating Chris Watts, former mistress, personal timeline, Sunday, August 12th, and Monday, August 13th, the eve of and the day of the murders, we've been looking at a number of details in the discovery. Breathe. Everyone take a deep breath with me. (sighs) Okay. We've been looking at a number of documents, of supplements, of all kinds of things in the discovery and information we can gather even outside of the realm of the discovery to try to see like what is up, all right? Most people agree, regardless of what side of the fence you fall on with any issue in the so-called Watts case, most people agree that law enforcement did not do a five-star job in (laughs) investigating and reporting out and synthesizing evidence in this case. (laughs) Oh, just another Manic Monday. I like that, John Smith. Just another manic Monday. Ooh. Oh, you're so lucky you got a little you got a little sing there. Um, yeah, what a great song, Bangles. I love the Bangles. 
I don't know, John, this could be an eternal flame. What do you think? And I'm never going to sing that. That's a tough one. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so one of the things that um, needs to be looked at is what did Nicole Kessinger tell her self-proclaimed BFF, Charlotte Nelson? I mean, in her interview with Kevin Kobach, she says, yeah, that girl's my life. That girl's my life. <laughs> Now, we will find in Stacy in um, law enforcement and agent Stacy Galbraith's narrative, having interviewed Charlotte Nelson, Charlotte says, you know, we see each other once a month, once every two months. You know, we kind of talk occasionally. She does call Nicole Kessinger her best friend, but she describes their relationship as being much more casual. Thank you, Utter Nutter. I try. I try to put forth all my talents for you guys. Hi, MB Gail. How are you? Welcome. Hello. Uh, oh, geez. So, uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm never going to be able to pronounce this, but you're right. And I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name, but you are so right. I'm going to pin it. If you wear a brown bikini, you get a break from law enforcement. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, John says Monday the 13th, worse than Friday the 13th. Absolutely. Yeah. So now I just want to sort of frame um, Nicole Kessinger's communication with Charlotte Nelson with what she told Kevin Kobach during her interview with him on August 23rd, 2018. This was their last interview this was the interview that happened sort of by accident. Um, Nicole Kessinger was turning in her phone and some other things, and she just kind of like popped a squat, and it ended up turning into an interview. You can gather that um, during this interview by Kevin Kobach's his tone of voice, his size. He just seems kind of done with it at this point. Should he have been? I think there's a lot more to investigate, but let's listen to this. Is audio okay? I might have to switch out my earbuds, but if it's okay right now, I won't take the time to do that. <clears throat> OJ is innocent, by the way. Oh, good Lord, John. Okay. <laughs> John McSmith. He's our, he's our, he's our channel's redheaded stepchild. We love him. We do. He doesn't have red hair. We love you, John. All right. Um, Or is this the one? Or is this the one? This is it, I think. All right. Yes. Okay. I think we're right about where I need to begin. I might have to go back a minute or two, but let's see. The audio on this one, guys, isn't great. Um, I know there are some channels that have done... Um, Oh my gosh, what's it called when there's words? Those things. I would like to do that. Someday I will. It's not going to be tomorrow. <laughs> so did that prompt all the phone calls of people going, no, are you okay? They were prompting me. Right. That, that is why right. I did that. Because I didn't even want to like say that. But I was getting all sorts of texts from people that were like, media is trying to contact me. I don't know what to do. I didn't tell them that I was a witness. I didn't tell them anything about that it was just like just say no comment i need you to do this okay and then a couple of my like super super close friends i asked them if they would be courteous enough to take all the pictures that we had of each other off facebook and social media and i said yes and that was like a couple of really close friends is there any text messages between you and friends that reference anything that would be concerning regarding this case no like talking about chris I think you've told me that you've never even really talked with my friends about him. No, and like my friend's dad died last night, like yesterday. I'm not worried about that. No, I know, but she started like. <laughs> Oh my gosh. She started like so I just want to point out, because I know you guys have fun chatting about different things. She says, So my friend's dad died last night. And he's like, I'm not worried about that. Because, you know, at this point, he knows the kind of tangents Kessinger goes on. 
and then let me just go back like 30 seconds just just so you can hear this because <clears throat> again we're just you know setting the stage here okay okay and then a couple of my like super super close friends i asked them if they would be courteous enough to take all the pictures that we had of each other off facebook and social media and they said yes and that was like a couple of really close friends is there any text messages between you and friends that reference anything that would be concerning regarding this case no like talking about chris yes closed captioning you thank really you talked with my friends about him no and like my friend's dad died last night like yesterday i'm not worried about that no i know but she started like She started like freaking out. She's like, I don't know what's going on in your life. She's like, I don't know if it pertains to this case. And she like just sent me like a screenshot of a news article of that case. And she was just like, she's like, what about conversation? I, I didn't mention that it had anything to do with that. She's like, I don't know if that's what it is. He works at the Darko. She's like, I really don't give a shit. She's like, I just really need you to be here with me and my dad and this and this and this. And she was just kind of upset because I had asked her. Um, to please say no comments in the media and it happened to be like right when her dad died and I think she was feeling a little like yeah but I mean you guys can read this there's nothing in okay guys so you know for those people you know out there who say and please don't anyone get defensive about this I'm just saying for those people out there who say you know um you know, oh, it's too much to say, you know, she's narcissistic or narcissistic personality disorder or, you know, what I lean towards, you know, obviously I've never met with her, analyzed, evaluated her in person. But from what I know from my profession, I would lean towards borderline personality disorder, just the same as what I think the um, the the psychologist who was correct in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case, um, you know, I don't know if she diagnosed or surmised, was up with Amber Heard. You know, her best friend's father just died, and she's acting like that's a pain in her butt. It's just, I, I don't know people who would react like that. I can't think of anyone. I Like any of you who I know personally, I know you would not, you know, so in there of me actually saying anything about it. I just told What's your phone number on that phone? 720. It's the same phone number that's on this one. 6569605. So no. I mean you guys can you guys can watch So this. between there was a conversation that I asked you about between you and Charlotte too. That's the same girl. That same girl was freaking out. Hi so Pride or Honesty, was there yeah a muffins. About kids with you and Charlotte, like you I can't remember the exact context, but you I guys were talking. I hang out with a guy who had kids. Okay. And um, what? she has not even like. Okay. All right. So your that. conversation about him having kids, how did that go? I mean, I don't know. I just told her. Now, did you great, great catch, Diana, on the body language? So just uh, look at the body language here. You know, we've been looking at that a lot lately. Um, you know, as a behavioral analyst, this is part of of something that I do. Um, and, you know, you guys do, too. It's just a lot of it's intuitive. You don't need training. But watch his hands when he says, how did that go? You know, he's like, come on now. Didn't don't. Let's get, you know, he's sick. He's over it. He's over it, Joan. Yeah. So was there ever a conversation about kids with you and Charlotte? Like you, I can't remember the exact context, but you I guys were talking. hang out with a guy who had kids. Okay. And um, what? She has not even, like, played. Right. So your conversation about him having kids, how did that go? I mean, I don't know. I just told her. She, uh, is it still? Did you delete yeah, that, yeah, or is it still? No, 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 no. I don't. I, I have no reason to delete anything else on my phone. Okay. The reason I okay. Notice, guys, how she does not answer him when he says. So the conversation about kids. Now we are going to get into Kevin Kobach and Stacey Galbraith's narrative as they write for the supplements. In the discovery and you it's it's clear that what they're angling for and i think it's obvious to to a number of people what they want to know about is her attitude towards the kids what may have been said about the kids and specifically then we're all trying to get to the end goal is to find out what she may have said to chris watts about those beautiful beautiful children she won't answer the freaking question i think he asks her 
pointedly four times throughout this interview. And he's asked her throughout every single interview up to this point. This is what their, their fifth interview, I think. And she will not direct the question. I deleted all this stuff with Chris is because. Here, wait, let me go back a minute. Cause he asked like, about the kid, not even a minute, a couple seconds. I even like. Okay. All right. So your conversation that. about him having kids, how did that go? I mean, I don't know. I just told her. She, uh, is it so, did you delete that or is it so? No, 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 no. I don't know. I, I have no reason to delete anything else on my phone. Okay. And the reason I deleted all this stuff with Chris was because he was making me feel really uncomfortable and I didn't want to see it in my phone anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, let me scroll all the way back here. Man, this girl talk a lot. No, she is like. So let's just, while we're here, because we talked about this before, but we didn't talk about the specific context of what that message said regarding the children. So obviously. So a couple things, Tia Marie, I didn't know that you've been um, in that profession for as long as you have. That's awesome. Exactly. That group of personality disorders. Now notice, and thank you very much for adding that. I appreciate that. Sometimes, you know, it's good to know that I'm not going way out on a limb that's not grounded. Thank you so much. Cause I very much respect your opinion, my dear. So notice how he keeps trying to, you know, like corral her back in to the kids and she just can't do it. She won't do it. The situation that we're looking at now with uh, the death of two children and all the other circumstantial stuff going on. Don't you think if you were her, when someone says the death of two children, it would be like a frying pan smacking you upside the head and you would like, you know, come to pay attention. I mean, my God, horrific. Around the case, it, you, I just want to make sure there was no comments ever made by you regarding, you know, children or dislike of children or love children, either way. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's easier for me to just take everything than it is to single it out. Plus, for the purposes of this case, the less exposure, you know, we're, we already have a, initially you drew concern from me when you told me you deleted everything from Chris. I want to pause there because I want to pay attention to that, but I just want to read this comment because exactly she, um, who hoop static. Exactly. She has such little awareness of how callous she comes off. I don't think she thinks there is anything at all odd about how bitterly cold she is self-absorbed, even in this extreme situation. Yes. And all of that is, you know, the definition moving towards that grouping of personality disorders where you just don't have a heart for anyone but yourself right? Oh, it's so sad. I know. Welcome. Hi, Black Cadillac. And oh, some other people came in. Hi, guys. Welcome. Let me go back just about 10 seconds. It, it's easier for me to just take everything than it is to single it out. Plus, for the purposes of this case, the less exposure, you know, we're, we already have a, initially you drew concern from me when you told me you deleted everything from Chris. I've already told you that. You understand why? There's no question as to why that might cause concern. So if there's anything else that ever comes up, I have it, and then we can just discuss it. Do you understand what I mean? All right. She doesn't even respond to him. Unresponsive. Objection, unresponsive. Non responsive. <laughs> Hi, Chantel. Her and her fiance. So that was like weeks ago. Hi, DTC. Hey, Bebop. <laughs> I'm glad you're, I'm glad we can start the party now, Bebop. <laughs> and she hasn't brought it up since, really, or like connected the dots or like said shit. I mean, you guys can look through all those texts. Ah, Debbie. 
always such great comments. You just said something else, Debbie, that was really great that I wanted to, um, I pinned it. I lo- I can't remember now, but Debbie McLean always has great comments. So she says it to Joan, um, there's a good possibility that they had burner phones only because Watts mentions a burner phone to Tammy saying maybe Shanann had a burner phone and might contact him on that unusual statement. Really good point, Debbie. But what we do know about Watts is that he, in telling his lies, will give little glimmers of truth, right? So that's a really good catch. So what a curious Rose and I noticed, and some of you who are here with us on the last live stream we did, was that um, Charlotte mentions going to the Verizon store in early September with Miss Kessinger. She was getting a new phone. So that makes it well, at least three phones that she went through that we know of. So why does she keep flipping the phones? You know, um, Elizabeth, hi, welcome. By the way, I agree with you. Destruction of evidence is itself evidence of guilt. Absolutely. Intentional destruction of evidence. I believe so. Could you prove it just on its face, just like that in the court of law? Obviously, you would need more to support it. But I think that, you know, you could easily move in that direction with this one. Um, Jennifer Bradford. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Welcome. Page 11, second phone in black case on counter. Yeah. So, oh, Curious Rose, would you like to come up, by the way? Hi, Sarah. Welcome. Um, I'm going to put the link in chat in case you do want to come up. So just come on up whenever you'd like. I'm sorry. I got so carried away just talking. <laughs> we love a Curious Rose. Everybody give it up for Curious Rose. Woohoo! You better have receipts for Curious Rose. So I'm going to continue to play this a little bit, and then we're going to get to, oh, so much more. I remember that was. That was definitely when things were going good. So this is like weeks prior, I'm just assuming. I think the day is at the top of whenever we started texting that day. Look, this is... We talk a lot. August 7th. Yeah. So I reference everything to Sunday the So that's the only conversation I did on there, I believe, on my phone. I don't think there's, like, anything else. And she, even last night, like, still wasn't even, she's so fucking hard. Yeah, so that Other than that, there shouldn't really be anything on with other people. But you guys can just pull everything and bump that to one. As long as you're okay with that, that's what would be I mean, if that makes your life easier. Okay. Let's oh. just stop making if that easier, makes your life less. easier. So if there's any question, like I told you before, some, like the two girls you just met did a lot of interviews in this case. They've done a lot of work. They may know things that I don't. Mm-hmm. There's no way we can all know everything. So they might go, oh, because somebody else was the one who told me about Charlotte um, and this message. So I've never well, read this. probably why. Potentially. I'm, I'm assuming that that's yeah. what that is. Because I said his name. And I don't even think she's put two and two together. Because last night, it was just like the way she was talking. She wasn't like, this is him, this is it. She was like, I don't know what's going on. I just assume this is it. Cause this guy looked at in a dark go, but she is not even like. What do you mean by can tell he has a lot to take care of in life? What did you mean when you said that? He has a mortgage and he has kids. Okay. Responsibility. (laughs) 
you're even saying in here, he's all about his kids. Yeah. And she was like, ask me somewhere in there, like, I mean, everything I had to say about him at that point was like really positive. Like, I think I made it clear that I wasn't like 100% sure this was like the man of my dreams and I was going to spend the rest of my life with him or anything, but I was enjoying the time that I was spending with him at that point. You're referencing that he has two kids and then <clears throat> you don't like that um, because you want to have that experience with somebody else? Is that what? I just said was? I wasn't sure if he was the one that I want to be with because he had already like done everything. Okay. Like I was like, it would be really nice to kind of like have kids and have my own marriage and all of that stuff. That was never anything I conveyed to him. So she said, you said he's handsome, huh? Did you send her a picture? Mm -hmm. And okay, that's so that let me just um, pause at that point and welcome a Curious Rose. Hi, Hello. Darwin. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm very well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Hi. of course. <laughs> of course. So uh, what, what what do you think so far of this little well, taquito? It's just painful, the voice. I think I it, you, after hearing it so many times, you become I a little... Know. A little I know. She makes you stir crazy. She does. And you know yeah. what, you know, yeah. what really stands out to me is, you know, you kind of like, you, you, you point to a good, a good, a good point here that no matter how many times I listen to this, and I'm sure many of you can relate, I always find it stunning that she's so blase about yes. what's happened. I mean, my God, mm -hmm. she's seen, she's connected to through her boyfriend. She's seen pictures of, she knows intimate details about this beautiful woman, this beautiful pregnant woman and these two little baby girls who are no longer of this earth, you know, um, it's just, it's so, yeah. it's just so hard. It's, it's hard. It's just, it's hard. It's sad. It's hard. It's sad. It's, it's difficult to listen to. Yeah. She's just, she's very harsh to handle. Yeah. And, uh, Diane makes a good point here says, what about looking up wedding dresses for hours? You wanted to get serious. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, everything that we know about her actions and her behaviors, you know, per what is available in the discovery, which is so very little of what there is, you know, indicates that she was definitely thinking very seriously um, about yeah. this relationship and about this man. I mean, there's right. no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, she spent hours, she spent more time looking at apartments than he did. I don't think he ever probably even looked yeah. at Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we, for those of you that didn't see the Last live streamer that weren't here, we, you know, we listened to that a bit um, and just how she went on and on and on and on about how she wanted him to get in the apartment and what she did to get him in that apartment. And <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, it, it, at some point it's almost shocking, even with her gross lack of self-awareness that she did not realize, like, you want him in the apartment, but does he want to be in the apartment? I mean, I personally believe even if he wanted to move out of the house, I think that he knew he did not have the financial wherewithal right. um, to make that move at the time, you know? Correct. Yeah. I, that's, um, that's, I think really what it came down to is he had to, he was going to have to back away from even discussing an apartment situation. Shannon was yeah. home and he had no money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, hi, Katerina. How are you? Welcome, my dear. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, uh, where shall we start? So let's see, I'm going to take this down. And okay, so let's see, I have a little, little kind of PowerPoint thing for you guys here. Let me see if I can load that up there. Are there any, um, any good comments or questions mm -hmm. out there, Miss, Miss I'm Curious looking, Rose? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at now. She has so many good people here in the people. chat always have great things to say. 
him, but he just agrees. It's you know, <laughs> there is something missing, but it's like the, the what is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I think we're all in awe, like how she doesn't break down with guilt. No, she doesn't show emotion though. She's just so a flat affected. Yeah, she. Yeah, she. <laughs> hard to watch mm -hmm, it is let's see okay hold on just pulling up the account that can get okay. us to the let's see allow cookies yes sign in yes um can i sign into that account while i'm signed this well i guess we're gonna find out <laughs> <laughs> if i go away for a minute i'll be right back <laughs> we'll go um, anywhere you know what? No, it doesn't want me to do that. So it's cool, Google. It's cool. Relax, Google. Relax. <laughs> so let me do a different way. Oh, okay. Hold it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I have to reload the StreamYard page. So if I go away, I'll be back in 30 seconds. Okay. 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 Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> makes me nervous. Okay, here you we know. go. She'll be back. We're not leaving. Okay. So that, that would be relatively painless. Okay. <laughs> so let me, let me do this a different way. <laughs> oh my goodness. So if anyone has any questions, I know that, you know, generally it's, you know, bad etiquette to type all caps. Hi, Kezchik56. How are you, darling? Nice to see you. Um, uh, but if you have a question, go ahead and jam those out in caps. Just it'll yes. be easier for yeah. to see them. Or yeah. All right. Slideshow. Okay. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh boy. Shocking text between Miss Kessinger. Chris Watts and Charlotte Nelson, Herpy <laughs> FM. <laughs> so, yep. all right. So, let's see, what do we have on Doc first here? Do it this way. Okay, so just, and we're going to get to the Charlotte text in just a moment here, but just taking a trip down memory lane, you know, of the text communications of the exchanges that were published in the discovery documents. And we know that this was a super small, teeny tiny little sprinkling of a sliver of the communications that actually exist dead between Chris Watts and his former mistress. This is the first one um, that, you know, this is the first one chronologically. So this dates back to um, June 27th, 2018. So now remember, their reported timeline is very important because, you know, some things happen like, whoops, like the little incident on that we've been talking about on July 4th, where Chris Watts mm -hmm. woke up in Nicole Kessinger's bed and it was July 4th. So it's one week after these first test text messages mm -hmm. um, between them as they appear in Discovery. You know, and Shanann had called a bunch of times and Chris went outside to call her back and she was pissed and Kessinger was in the shower and he was like, yo, I got to go home. I can't have her call again and not be home because she's going to bug, which we all, I under, I, well, I don't know if we all understand, but I'll speak for myself. I understand why she was bugging out. Yes. Um. So, you know, and then Kessinger somehow, we don't even know how she knew his address exactly, showed up on his front doorstep. So mm -hmm. this is one week after these texts, which they both say was the beginning of their relationship. So that just puts her behavior into a, a context. It's yeah. like, you guys have been dating for a week and you're already that cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Both cuckoo. Yeah, they're both, they were both cuckoo after one week. Yeah, Nailed. yeah. So um, this says, so this is Chris Watts, says, promise. I'm about loyalty, truthfulness, and being dedicated. <laughs> I don't like playing games unless it's role playing. Wink. <sighs> Everyone, gather yourself. I know. I threw up a little bit. <laughs> I know. Gather. <laughs> Deep breath. It's okay. We're going to get through this together. Yes, we are. Um, <laughs> if you want me there, I will be there. 
ice cream, cookies, and lollipops. Sounds like a cheat meal night, LOL. That's a little Thrive humor and possible double entendre. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Their cheat night um, like gives me a bellyache. Yeah, right. <laughs> it doesn't um, even sound fun. I know, I know. And then um, I'm still going to see you. It won't be as often as we would like, but I will make it happen. So now this is on um, June 29th. Oh, I do want to say, by the way, this first text, which is the first text between Watts and Kessinger Mm -hmm. that is in Discovery, June 27th, that's the same day that Shanann flew out to North Carolina with Bella and Celeste and her dad helped him out, flew out there with the kids because it was probably a lot to handle those two kids on a plane. Oh, so the yeah. second Shanann is in that plane out to North Carolina, he's promising. He's all about loyalty, truthfulness, and being dedicated to another woman. Oh, that's the exact day. I never the noticed that. The exact day. Before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exact day. So uh, then it says, I'm still going to see you. It won't be as often as we like, but I'll make it happen. You think you're the only one addicted right now? I'm so hooked on you. And then uh, also on the 29th, um, sleeping without your warm body next to me isn't going to be fun tonight. So now, okay, so it's possible based on what we know about those two that Shanann left on the 27th. um, We see these messages on the 27th. So already on the 29th, sleeping without your warm body next to me isn't going to be fun tonight like that's a text message a lot of people could imagine sending but not after you've only slept next to someone one or two nights just right. barely knowing them you know right. yes mm. so now we have um just who cares about the food talk um let's see so now on july 4th just pulled up to your place um you're so considerate Oh, just pulled up to your place. So that's 11.02 p.m. Okay. So Watts is saying, I just pulled up to your place at 11.02 p.m. on July 4th. Now, what's interesting about that is that is the day when, you know, he woke up in Nicole Kessinger's bed. Shanann called. He had to take off. She was pissed. Showed up at his front doorstep. And during the course of his interviews, he says, well, then she said, you know, that we probably shouldn't see one another for the remainder of the day because you know they were like arguing but now here it is 11 p.m that evening and he's just pulled up to your place you know Jesus. yeah and then um let's see so then he's i noticed he's calling her boo which he used to call shenan you know mm-hmm. um so now at some point now i'm in the second column are we bad people let me make sure yeah you're seeing that okay mm-hmm. are we bad people kessinger says and Chris Watts says, I'd love to be part of it. Being in your life is something I crave. Jesus. Then he says, and now this is July 1st. So again, this is just a few days after they report that they got together. Mm-hmm. Conserve it while you can. I enjoyed our conversation tonight. I hope you have great a great night. Sweet dreams, Nikki. <laughs> and then, <laughs> um, and then um, on July 4th, again, that day when they were supposed to not see each other in the evening because they got into an argument, well, you know, throw that to hell because on July 4th at 6.53 p.m., he says, I'm getting drenched right now, LOL. Like to see you all wet in the rain. Hmm. <laughs> and then uh, my signal sucks so bad here and might take a while to download your pictures crushed tacos and oops sorry i cut that off crushed tacos and it's gonna be a mystery guys Um, now this is interesting kessinger says to him now this is on june 30th so this is you know just a few days after supposedly you know they just like first got together Mm -hmm. so she says i have an idea by the way i have a free hotel stay at the holiday inn not sure if you can swing it this month, but we can road trip to the mountains or Southern Colorado for a day or two if you want. So she's really trying to, you know, like, you know, she's definitely participating in this, trying to bring the closeness to the relationship. Right. She reaffirms, won't cost a dime, LOL. Hmm. And then um, she says to him on June 30th again, she supports me, but her parents were in a situation like that when she was a kid and it came up. It won't bother me. I'm not going to stop seeing you. I've made up my mind. Are we bad people? 
yes, you're both bad people, you're both by the terrible. way. <laughs> you're horrible. <laughs> horrible. We hate you. <laughs> yes, he supports yes. me. Who do you think she's talking about? Charlotte? I don't know because, you know, well, let's hold let's hold that. Let's hold okay. I don't know. Let, let's move on right. to the uh, Charlotte information because this is a question that mm. I think, you know, I'm asking you and putting out to everybody because it gets mm -hmm. really confusing. And, yeah. you know, even from Stacey Cal Utter Nutter, yes, you are, Stacey Galbraith's account um, in the discovery, you know, she says basically like outright, like, yeah, this is confusing. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. all right. So, hmm. So he, let me preface um, Stacey Galbraith's um, narrative in the discovery by pointing this out. In summarizing um, his conversations with Nicole Kessinger via these interviews, unfortunately not interrogations, it's actually after this interview, um, the one that we just watched some excerpts of that happened on August 23rd, 2018, the last of their series of Kevin Kobach pulling his hair out and grinding his teeth. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kevin Kobach does note um, conversations that happened between Miss Kessinger and Charlotte Nelson. Now, mm -hmm. when he recounts these communications, he puts a date on them at least three times, three times that I saw when I was just kind of skimming through the discovery as them being on August 7th. When Stacey Galbraith, who um, does a much more um, complete job in summarizing the communications between Miss Kessinger and Charlotte Nelson, because she was tasked to interview Nelson, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she well, let me read this. Kevin Kobach notes about Miss Kessinger's text with BFF Charlotte Nelson dates them at August 7th, 2018. Stacey Galbraith's narrative dates the text as occurring on August 12th, 2018, mm -hmm. one day before the murders. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, just because of the proximity to the murders, to me, that's like a really big deal. What do you big, think? It's a very big deal. Why yeah. is Kevin's like given a little bit of a cushion? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And where did he get that from? Just like, you know, when we were oh, wrapping up right. the last live stream and she's like, oh, you know, I'll just send you, I'll just, I'll just like right. email you those messages. Like, was he trusting her with yeah. this? I think that, didn't we comment, like he actually said, send me some those screenshots. That's, you're exactly. going to, that, you're going to hold that valid? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay crazy. Right. So, um, let's see, is this the part that I want? To, okay. So I'm just going to, all right, let's switch here. <clears throat> so stop that screen. Hi, Jamie Smith. How are you, sweetheart? Welcome. And now share There's something different. Got something different for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> that no. Yes. Okay. So many files. So this is Kevin Kobach. <clears throat> I spoke with Nicole about the text messages conversation she had with Charlotte Nelson. I specifically asked what she meant by his children making her uncomfortable. Nicole said she wants her own family. She said she never said anything to him about his wife or children being a problem. She never said to him his kids were an issue. She said she was thinking about building her own life and that he already had a life. She said she never said anything about the kids damaging their relationship. She said there was never a conversation with Watts that he may have thought she was making reference to Shanann or his children being a problem. Oh, please. No. Nicole said she was 100% committed to Watts at this time, was not sure if he was a man she wanted to spend the rest of her life with. Nicole said she cared about Watts. Let's see. Clear. Um, at this time, but was not sure. And then I just read that. Nicole said she cared about Watts and his children and always found the children cute. Nicole said Chris never mentioned getting rid of the kids and always discussed them moving <laughs> with him when he got a new apartment. 
Nicole said the whole case has shocked her and uh, said he lied so much. He lied to everybody and had everybody fooled. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let me just go down. Something I wanted to read about Nelson. Oh, nothing further. Okay. So that's that. But um, hold that. Let me see. Um, okay. All right. So now we're going to, again, switch frames and we'll go to the um, text messages between Miss Kessinger and her self-proclaimed BFF, Charlotte Nelson, and Stacey Galbraith's narrative. Okay. That's where we want this one. Let me just make this a little bigger because it's been a long day at work and reading and looking yeah. at computers. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Let me just make sure we don't need to read anything prior to this to make it. I don't think we do. See narrative for details. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it. All right. I just wanted to make sure I don't want to, I don't want to miss anything important. I know. Us. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> On September 5th, 2018, I was asked to assist by speaking with Charlotte Nelson. Nelson is a friend of Nicole Kessinger, and the two exchanged text messages about the relationship between Kessinger and Chris Watts. I was provided a packet of text messages involving area code 720, which I was advised was that of Shanann Watts. This is weird. Like, why? Well, I don't what understand is? how they. I know. I don't understand. Anna Fla is. Could you check? Could you skim um, mm -hmm. comments to see if Anaphylaxis is with us? And if so, Anaphylaxis, what do you think about them messing stuff up like this? So, action taken. I, Agent Galbraith, subsequently reviewed the content. The records are somewhat confusing as some of the correspondence is clearly with 720, blah, blah, blah. But other times it is with. 9008000004101. However, the content appears to indicate that the person is the same as the one communicating from 720, blah, 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 based upon the conversation flow. 720 is the number of Charlotte Nelson. And I guess, and not Shanann Watts, who she originally indicated, that's what it appeared. It's so strange to me. That is such a mess. I mean, that's a major mess up. If that's what they were I doing. I mean, she's Shanann's a murder victim, my lord. Jesus. Oh. So here, um, now remember, Stacy Galbraith is the one who um, dates these text messages as being on August 12th, 2018. And we can believe that this is the accurate date because the date is included with her narrative here. Yeah. For some reason, Kevin Kobach on at least three instances um referred to the text exchange between miss kessinger and charlotte nelson as being on august 7th what do you guys think about that does anyone have a thought on that i don't know i don't see anna oh yeah she might be might be doing things so all right the texting is on august 12 2018. i am not certain of the time zone in which the records are formatted some of the content is undecipherable Based on the numbers, it is difficult to say for sure if the texts are from Nikki or Charlotte, but the content lends, lends to context and author. Now, please bear with me because I learned when trying to read this last time, um, they're kind of like backwards, right? Yeah. So just keep correcting me if you need to, Rose. No, I know. We, we learned this last time. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so we, it uh, So I think it's Nikki. Okay. So been kind of hanging out with a guy recently, keeping it a secret. Dude loves to eat P word. Never met a man who does till now. I just let it happen. LOL. Then Charlotte says, where did you meet this mystery man? No, she doesn't say mystery. <laughs> where did you meet this man? Kessinger says, I don't know, man. Sean never ate me out oh. my one time. Okay. <laughs> um, oh my God. Charlotte. I don't think it's you, man. Some guys are lame with that stuff. Kessinger, I feel like every dude I meet has kids these days. And if they don't, they have commitment issues or some BS like Sean. 
So, you know, she refers to having kids as BS. And man, does she ever jump around on topics? That was like a, a yeah. Point. Sorry for the vulgarity, guys. I mean, this is just what it is. So I'm just reading what I can. Just two dudes think... texting back and forth to each other. I know. Two dudes. I know. They like two dudes. I know they do. Mm. Um, what's the dude's name? <laughs> Kids are cute, man. When it says menge, it's man. Kids are cute, man. It's package deal, though. Um, that's awesome, man. Uh, the fact he takes care of his kids is a good thing, I think. He's all about his kids. Um, that's cool. Oops. How old are they? And notice she doesn't answer any mm -hmm. questions though about I the kids. Know. How old is he? 33, I think. Nothing about the kids though. I'm sure law enforcement noticed that. Right. I just feel like I will always be second place. Like he's been there, done that. It's early though. We will see. He is very kind to me though. Um, and he works out, so he's super sexy. Mm. Don't tell nobody. I haven't made up my mind on him yet. Mm. Like, he seems too good to be true. Haha, -ha, yeah, it's the best sex I've ever had. I'm hooked. I think he really likes me. Oh, my God. I know. It's painful. It is painful. It's painful. So now on September 6, 2018, at about 1559 hours, I received a call from Charlotte Nelson. I had left Nelson a message on September 5th, so the day before, and texted her on September 6th prior to her call to me. Nelson met Kessinger in high school. They were not as close as they are now. Nelson moved to Aruba and moved back around 2006, and she and Kessinger got in contact. Kessinger is Nelson's best friend. They text a lot, but did not see each other, but maybe once every month or two. Nelson knew why I would be contacting her. I asked how this case is sitting with her. She told me it is a horrible situation, and it's very upsetting. She is very worried about Kessinger. Nelson said that Kessinger got caught up with the wrong person at the wrong time and is just devastating. I asked if Nelson knew that Kessinger had been dating Chris Watts. Whoops. Sorry, I just lost my spot. Oh, wait, here we go. <clears throat> Kessinger had been dating Chris Watts. Okay. Nelson explained that Kessinger was working as a contractor for Anadarko. Kessinger had told Nelson that she was seeing a guy at work at some point. Kessinger did not say who, and Nelson never met him. Nelson saw news about this case and heard that the guy worked at Anandarko, and Nelson wondered if Kessinger knew the guy. Kessinger then called Nelson and let her know um, that the media may try to get in contact with her about the case. Nelson said that Ke Nelson said that Kessinger said she could not discuss much about the case with her. <laughs> Nelson told me her father died a couple weeks ago and she had been drinking a lot to deal with things right now because her best friend didn't give a shit. Okay. Right. Sorry, that was my own. Okay. <laughs> no. Nelson said that she had looked back and Kessinger had sent her a photo of Kessinger and the guy she was seeing. Nelson agree, agreed to go back through her text messages and screenshot the communication she has with Kessinger. Kessinger had told Nelson that the guy she was seeing had a couple of kids. Nelson knew Kessinger to like kids, and she seemed in favor of it. Kessinger said he was a really nice guy, and she did not seem to mind that he had kids. Nelson said that she did not say much as she tends to let people live their lives. Nelson did not think it was smart of Kessinger to date someone who worked, who she worked with since she liked her job here, you think? But Nelson did not tell Kessinger that. Maybe you should have, BFF. Right. <laughs> I asked if Kessinger spoke of the guy's marital status to Nelson. Kessinger did not at the time, but Kessinger has since told Nelson that the guy had told Kessinger that he was separated from his wife. Um, let's see. Kessinger did not provide Nelson details of the relationship as to where they spent time, when they spent time, and how they spent time, or if they were intimate. I don't know how she could say that after the text messages we just read. Right. That's a, that's, that's a flat out lie. Right. Yeah. She said that she did not know and she did not ask. Well, she didn't ask, but she was told. 
Nelson said Kessinger just got out of a relationship and Nelson just lets her tell her what she wants to share. Nelson described Kessinger as private. Seriously? Little Miss, like, vomit all? Mm -hmm. Private? Okay. <laughs> I told, see, so what, what this tells me is that the way that Charlotte Nelson is characterizing and describing Nicole Kessinger to law enforcement is skewed for some reason because she 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 has to know these things are not correct you know i mean the proof is in the pudding i told nelson i had some content from text messages between her and kessinger at which point she probably peed her pants <laughs> i read the one <laughs> about it being the best sex kessinger ever oh so this is interesting so after so get this so after um i i got this when i was reading this by myself but we i didn't point it out last time you you guys may have seen this so after Charlotte Nelson told Agent Galbraith all of this horseshit, then Agent Galbraith says, I read the one about it being the be best sex Kessinger mm -hmm. ever had and the one about oral sex. So <sighs> she basically, you know, she's saying, I gotcha. Mm -hmm. This is what I know, right? Yes. Nelson remind yeah. So, yeah. Nelson reminded me that her dad died and she had been drinking heavily because that's going to be the cover all excuse, right? It is. She told me that she actually barely remembers the text with Kessinger conveniently. Oh, this burns my soul. I know it does. Nelson told me that Kessinger dates a lot, which is also <laughs> interesting. And in the past, she had not had the best of luck in the man she has dated. So Nelson typically does not ask about details, probably because Kessinger is going to give her all the details, whether she likes it or not. Yes. Uh, I read the following text to Nelson. Nikki says, feel like every dude I meet has kids these days. And if they don't, they have commitment issues or some BS like Sean. And for those of you who don't know, Sean's her ex-boyfriend probably got that from contact. I asked Nelson for some context to that text as it seems as it seemed that a man with kids may be a negative thing based upon the words in the text alone. Nelson said that she does not think that Kessinger was against him having kids and Kessinger wants kids too. She has had she has just had bad luck with men in her past. Kessinger wants to find someone and when she does, it turns out the guy is lying or something. Kessinger seems to take it upon herself and feel like she is picking the wrong guys. Well, obviously she is. <laughs> Nelson, I, yeah, I, yeah. This girl's like tone deaf. Okay. Nelson encourages Kessinger that she will find someone. Nelson does not think the BS, quote unquote, part in the text was met as a negative and that Kessinger felt the guy having kids was a negative. Hmm. Nelson did not think Kessinger actually met the guy's kids. She has no idea when or where Kessinger and the guy hung out together. Nelson figured that if it was working out, she would hear more about the guy from Kessinger. Kessinger did not tell Nelson anything about the guy's wife in their texts. I asked how Kessinger is doing. Nelson told me that she is a mess and says that she cannot say much about the case. Nelson thinks Kessinger feels partially responsible and maybe he went crazy because <laughs> Kessinger came into the picture. I really want to know what y'all think about that. I know. What do you think about that, that's, Rose? That's a, that is a damning statement, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it is. I definitely think it is. I wonder if I can pop that in my um hold I want to see if I can pop that in my PowerPoint. <laughs> so she thinks Kessinger feels partially responsible as maybe he went crazy because Kessinger came into the picture. That was a definite conversation between the two of them, you know it. Yeah, I mean it had to have been. What do you guys yeah. in chat think? Let's I'll see. give it a second so we can catch up to y'all. <laughs> Somebody throw us a bone. We want to know what y'all think. Or do you think that something like, well, we kind of already knew that. Or do you think that this statement is like kind of a big deal? What do you think? I think it's a big deal because Nick, Nikki was doing everything possible to make it seem like this was going to happen regardless. Yeah. 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 Whereas this puts so much more um, on her plate. Yeah. 
I agree. Oh, good. It's officially in my PowerPoint. <laughs> see. Um, let me just check chat here. Can you repeat um, oh, yeah. the damning statement? Yeah. Do you want to repeat that, Rose? Sure. Let me go back up. Maybe it'll be good. For, oh, are, if it's not yeah, like here, don't worry. Well, I asked, I asked how Kess, no, no problem. I asked Kess and how Kessinger is doing. Nelson told me that she is a mess and says she cannot say much about the case. Nelson thinks Kessinger feels partially responsible as maybe he went crazy because Kessinger came into the picture. That's pretty damning. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Sorry, I'm we're, I'm we're always Let's behind share. a little bit in the chat. Charlotte, Charlotte, yeah, I saw a couple people felt like she was a little, Charlotte seemed a little scared of NK. She might have been. Yeah, no, I feel that way too. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely feel that way. Oh, question, wait, question, what does that say? Question, something about the secret calculator. Um, oh, let let's see. T. Marie, yes, bad people. See, this is four times a day, very extreme. Yeah. Bebop says, Chris um, kept those Anadarko cards secret from Shanann. Yeah, I think he did. I mean, and, and in a way, I almost think, well, I understand why he kept them secret from Shanann because she did have like kind of extreme spending habits. So maybe he's like, I just want a little bit to spend how I want, you know? Yeah. But yeah. oh, wait, hold it. I'm way back in chat. But um, but yeah, Kat Katrina, she's a demon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't hold back, but I agree. Um, most, most in men. Was Charlotte sober during this interview? That's a really good question. Um, yeah, we, I guess like we don't know. She didn't comment on that. I don't trust this chick, said Kaz Chick. I don't either. I mean, I mean, Stacey Galbraith did, you know, a very subtle, like, well, you just said this, but, you know, then she read Kessinger's and her text back to her, which just disproved what right. Charlotte Hold the agent. I mean, she refreshed like, your memory. Yeah, let me refresh your memory, Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> takes a real man to catch a big fish like NK. CW had her on the hook, but lost her. No game, not man enough. Uh, I don't know. But I read it. Um, <laughs> Marie says, sorry, Charlotte may have been speculating because. She would have felt guilty for being part of it. But was NK actually feeling that way? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, Molson Man says, if you sing my name again, you're likely going to lose six or seven subs. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, Ara says, maybe those quote unquote loyal friends didn't come or haven't since come forward because they don't want to be associated with her. Yeah, okay, so Ara, you're saying, is it a matter of loyalty or is it a matter of, I do not want your, I do not want your dirt to eclipse yeah. my shine, right? I think so. uh, yeah. 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 Kez Chick says, NK feels guilty. I didn't think she had feelings. Oh, yeah, well, that's a really good point, Kez Chick. That's a really good point. I mean, because have we heard? That's a really good point. So Charlotte Nelson characterizes Miss Kessinger as feeling guilty, but we have not heard NK herself in all of these hours of interviews say that she feels guilty or really make a statement that expresses sincere guilt. That's a great point, Kazjek. Yeah, she does. You know what I mean? Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't want. She's not going to take any any blame. Right. It's a repeat it. It's just to repeat it, be, you know, behaviors that constantly back it up that like, no, yeah. this was going to happen. And, you know, really, if even if we hadn't met a lot of money issues and she was so materialistic and he was just so happy that I wasn't. Yeah, totally. So wait, Karen says, wait, oh, hold on. I'm trying to I'm trying to catch this. Uh, Hi, Karen G, by the way. So Karen says, Kessinger didn't act normal in her interviews. Kessinger was in bad behavior, was way less put together and responsible and confident as she kept trying to make herself seem. I absolutely 100% agree with that. Mm -hmm. Now, Tia Marie, you just said um, what I, I, and I'm, let's see, can I pin these when I'm doing it through YouTube? Let me see. Oh, I can. Cool. 
Um, did it pin? I don't mm -hmm. know. Did you see Tamari's message? Yeah, it's pinned. Oh, good. I mean, oh, cool. I'm doing it a different way so I can hopefully stay like more current. Yeah. Um, hold it. No, I can't read it though. Can you read her message, sweetie? Yeah. Let me, it says, I mean, Charlotte would feel guilty if it were her in NK's position, but NK probably didn't feel guilty, question mark. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. So it's Charlotte who is, you know, you know, she's imagining being in that position and she would feel the guilt, but I don't think that NK felt it. So she's, you know, trying to kind of cover for NK, you know, in, in, in the way she would respond because it's like more normal and human. <laughs> right. And yeah. saying that she was a mess, well, she's going to be a mess, but why is she a mess? Cause she lost, you know, what she thought was going to be her future as opposed right. to, you know, a, you know, a family annihilation. There's a difference. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then, or can you read, Um, are you able to read Debbie's? Debbie's? Let me see here. It should be pinned. Oh, yeah, that's pinned. At Kelly Thank Watts, you. use this credit card on July 21st at the Speedway. $20 charge and a $54 charge for pizza for him and NK that evening. So that's on July 21st. Okay. Good catch, Debbie. Oh, that's interesting. So, huh. Okay. So July 21st. So we're going back, you know, uh, like three weeks back. So I wonder, you know, the question has come up I, many times, you know, people will ask, or you were thinking about, you know, did Shanann have an idea that there was, you know, a mistress that something was going on now to me, Shanann seems like the kind of person, unless this is right around the timing of Nutgate, isn't it? When did Nutgate? I think it's right around the timing of Nutgate. So maybe she got really consumed in that. Oh, I honestly that don't. That's a good thing to look at. Yeah. Could, could someone um, look up when Nutgate happened? Would you mind doing that, anyone? Um, because if it wasn't something like Nutgate, you know, pulling her attention away from, right. you know, Seeing, no, noticing what her husband was doing, she seemed like she would be like right on top of that. That's a really good point, Debbie. So did she notice that and somehow she just kept quiet or was there something else going on? You know, where, what, where she, wait, is this the, is this, what weekend is Cece's birthday? Uh, August 7th. I thought it was, oh, no. I'm sorry. They're her no. birthday party. Um, yeah. Uh, it was before Nutgate, so it might have been around this time too. Oh, right, 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 right. We're either dealing um, with Nutgate or Cece's birthday. Oh, so right. I think exactly. Shanann's attention might have been somewhere else. Yeah, and that yeah, so last one, one of those we overlooked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that makes really sense. Then okay, July seventh was Nutgate. That would make sense because then two weeks later, what they had Cece's birthday party, which the Watts did not go to. Yeah. Right, that, there oh, wait, you go. Can you read that again, please? Oh, yeah, Molson said July 7, 2018 was not gate at the Watts, the obsession. Oh, okay. And then it okay, was the, like, the, the two weekends after that was the, when they had the party, which the Watts, of course, did not attend. But we saw right. the constant text messages. Shanann was sent. Like, it was just the, the constant text messages about Chris's family to Chris. So there was right. a lot of a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, thank you very much, Molson Man. We should trivia man, Molson Man, <laughs> Molson, Molson Man. Oh no, you're gonna have new songs now. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Um, okay. So wait. Um, let's see here. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna go back to reading this. So okay, cool. I found a new way actually to kind of keep up with comments a little bit better. That's cool. All right. Okay, so um, yeah, so Nelson thinks Kessinger feels partially responsible as maybe he went crazy because Kessinger came into the picture. Yeah, Tia Marie, I think that's totally what Nelson is thinking. Yeah. Um, Kessinger liked the guy. Nelson thinks Kessinger needs a good therapist. Amen, sister girl. <laughs> really? I guess if there's any indication that Kessinger may want to maintain a relationship with the guy, Nelson said that Kessinger wants to cooperate in the fullest to make sure he stays in jail. That's a really good canned statement, Nelson. I thank Nelson for her time, and she agreed to send me screenshots of her text with Kessinger. What is up with law enforcement trusting these freaking screenshots? I know. 
pisses me off. Nelson promptly got back to me on September 6, 2018 to provide Hi, Agent Galbraith. This is Charlotte Nelson. I'm looking through my phone and the latest text messages I have um, from Nikki started on August 21st. And we mostly talk about my dad passing away and my family issues and also that she is concerned with the media. I probably deleted the whole conversation when Nikki asked me to delete pictures we have together on Facebook because the media was calling her friends to get information. I know about the text messages we talked about because yesterday evening I got your um, I got your voicemail and when Nikki came over later that night, I told her you had called and that I wanted to verify that it was actually the CBI calling me and not a scammer trying to get information. I asked her why you would be calling me and she said it could be because of the text we exchanged and then she showed me. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I don't have any messages before that. Would you like me to still send you everything starting on August 21st? Holy. Also, I left you a voicemail regarding a question I have. My question is if the text messages you have are going to be made a public matter. I shared very personal information about mine and my boyfriend's intimate life. And I'm concerned about what will be released, which oh, that's legit because your friends a screw up. I know. Please let me know or call me for any more questions. I responded, <clears throat> stand by on text from the 21st. Let me consult my partner. Thank you for getting back to me on the matter. I hate it when I write like a long email like Charlotte did and somebody responds to you the way Galbraith did there. No, it's a slap in the face. (laughs) I'm like, am I in trouble or what? You know, (laughs) not that anything like this, but I I, I think I get that feeling. It's a bad feeling. Yeah. So, okay. So what we know now, and, and I didn't know this until every time I read this, I catch something different. So all of the text messages between Kessinger and Charlotte Nelson are from whatever they could, you know, squeeze out of Miss Kessinger's phone, not from Charlotte Nelson's phone, because she had, oops, surprise, surprise, deleted all of them. Do we right. see a trend? I see a trend. A little bit of a trend. A little bit of a trend. <sighs> all right. On September 7th, 2018, I attempted to clarify this with Nelson. Quote, I asked her why you would be calling me, and she said it could be because of the text we exchanged, and then she showed me. Good catch, Galbraith, end quote. I texted Nelson and called her. The phone went straight to voicemail like it was off. Surprise, freaking surprise. Now, catch this, y'all. Everybody, wake up. Listen. (laughs) On September 7th, 2018, Nelson responded, She showed me the old text messages on her phone the night before last, September 5th, when she was here at my house. We had went to Verizon earlier on that same day so she could get a new phone since the one she had wasn't working well. Mm -hmm. It must be that the messages were backed up and transferred over to the new phone. So get this, everybody. On September 5th, 2018, the day Stacy Galbraith contacts Charlotte Nelson, Stacy Galbraith from the CBI, contacts Charlotte Nelson to interview her and get information from her about her text communications with Miss Kessinger. On that very same day, She's she and Kessinger go to the Verizon store to get Miss Kessinger a new phone. Yeah. That's shady. And now we know, subsequently, all of her text messages between herself and Miss Kessinger were deleted. Jesus. And Kessinger got a new phone because her phone wasn't working well. Read, she probably can't get anything off of it. Right? Right. Frederick Police Department Detective Baumhober is in possession of the phone of Kessinger and potentially the text will exist in it upon execution of a search warrant. 
because she has deleted them. She's thrown them away. She's broke them. She's gotten a new phone. She's busted a SIM card. She's, she's how many times now? You know, there's so much with her. She holds up a lot of time. Guys, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you think about that? I know, Rose, like you and I kind of both like digested oh, that. Day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other, when we were reading through this the other night, but guys in chat, I mean, what do you think about that? And if anybody has a desire to come up on panel and um, say whatever you'd like to say, please feel free. Let me see if I can catch you guys here in chat. Kelly is getting a bit cranky. <laughs> I just feel emphatic about the issue. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. I do. I do. Uh, Big Cash Chick says, because it's such a relaxing subject. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, 200 people. 200 people in chat. Oh, Welcome, so everyone. Great. Hit the <laughs> thumbs up, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, oops, let's see. Um, now, first of all, does anyone want to come up on panel to say a couple things? Because if you do, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? Um, let's see. Why wouldn't they find that? Why wouldn't they find that suspicious? Cor Hi, Courtney, by the way, welcome. Now, Courtney, what are you asking? Why wouldn't they find what suspicious? That um, there's just so much, oops, that's suspicious. Um, oops. <laughs> All right. Um, hi, Kelly Rott. How are you? Welcome. Um, but homeboy never complained either. The future, I'll bet you won't be. I don't know. I'm just going to read these out loud because I'm like uh, muttering, under, muttering, uttering under my breath. So Edward says, oh, wait, I can't even read them. And I can, okay. In the future, I'll bet you won't be able to delete pictures, emails, or texts from phones unless you smash, uh, and then it goes away. That's so weird. I've got to figure out this new way of um, reading comments because I'm keeping like more in real time, but then they go away. Um, hmm. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go pop back over to StreamYard. I am going to put, um, I'm going to share the... Um, the link, I'm going to drop the link to come on panel and chat if you would like to come up and say anything in the way of reacting. Uh, yeah, please go ahead and grab that link. <laughs> so let's see what Ara says. Ara, you feel like coming up? Ara says, fact, she did realize that she was the reason for her marriage was failing and was in the process of doing something about, about it besides the book. She was taken too soon. Absolutely. It was not allowed to grow and move forward. Absolutely. No matter what, you know, somebody, what impression somebody has about Shanann or no matter what somebody can say about Shanann, I always go back to basically what R just said is that she was, you know, really captured and frozen in time. Whereas, you know, all of us, I've gotten to live nine years past 34 and my God, I've like learned a lot and I wouldn't want to be held accountable or judged by the yeah. decisions I made at um, 34, you know? Yeah. You, you do a lot of growing up. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. What do you think? Ms. I mean, Rose? she, I mean, she about? talked about that. She was a difficult person at times. She, she did yeah. She did mention that in her videos. Um, I just think it's we get to watch them over and over again that That's she's right. really difficult. Yeah. Because yeah. we're watching it over and over. But still, it's, not, it's I'm sure it was very intense to live with her. Yeah. 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 And I, and I, I think she was, in my opinion, based on what we see and what's in the discovery, even her, you know, letter to Chris, which... I have not read on this channel. I just, I don't, I, I always oh, feel like, I don't think I'm there. going to, because I just feel, I don't know why. So I just personal. feel like, yeah, I want to, I just want, I, I feel like it's too personal. So it's, Sarah yeah. says, any chance of personal improvement was removed by the will of another. Very, very, very well stated, Sarah. Um, yeah. Now, day by day, welcome. Yeah, a lot of self-reflecting in North Carolina. 
I think she did do that too. Yeah. Now, Day by Day says, um, Kelly, I'm sorry, but she had issues, both toxic. I listen, I agree. Oh, yeah. Um, I agree. She, we do girl agree. Had issues. 100% <laughs> agree. I do. Extremely um, inappropriate. Yeah. But the fact remains, um, you know, so let's say if I'm sure at some point in the year that I was 34, I behaved in some ways where somebody might look at me and say, man, she's got issues. You know, if now, I mean, I, 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 in a number of people, I think when they were 34, same situation, right. your life stopped right then. You don't want to be judged for, for those moments. Um, you know, yeah. Um, so Ara says, Tammy said CBI was good at retrieving deleted messages. Well, something I will share with you guys, and I've shared it before on this channel. Um, I've mentioned my friend who's an attorney a lot in the context of another creator who many of us are not so favorable mm -hmm. of or whatever. But um, he did speak to somebody um, um, in law enforcement who was very closely connected to this case. And one of the things that he did share with me, and now he didn't share everything with me that he had discussed after he checked out some of the creators that I was <laughs> affiliating myself with on YouTube. But hey, we all live and we learn, right? Mm -hmm. To the point of yeah. man. Um, he did say that he learned that nearly all, like the vast bulk majority of the communications between Watts and Miss Kessinger if not all, like every single one of them were in fact retrieved, like for certain, that was a discussion point. It was stated um, if he did not know that with certainty, he we would not have had the conversation the way that we did. So I have been working um, with that idea that every single one, if not almost every single one of the text messages between Miss Kessinger and Chris Watts have in fact been retrieved. Ah, thank you, Ara. So you said, uh, Sandy has a question. Let me go see if I can grab that. Thank you very much. Um, so Sandy asks all of us, what do you all think about NK saying, I didn't tell her I was a witness or anything? Ah. Okay, so um, in the good question, Sandy, I almost pointed this out when we were listening to it. So in the interview that we listened to in the beginning of this live stream with Nicole Kessinger and Kevin Kobach, August 23rd, their last interview, Kobach's like, thank the good Lord, hallelujah. Um, <laughs> she says to him, now, I didn't tell her I was a witness or anything. Now, Sandy, that's a really good question. I noticed at several points during that interview, I didn't count them. I don't know how many. It's just anecdotal that I noticed this. Um, she referred to herself as a witness. Now, what I personally think about that, and I'm going to, I'm going to see if, oops, I'm going to see if I can find it here. Um, I just got to grab the transcript while I'm talking, which is kind of mm -hmm. tricky, but I'm going to try it. Um, what I personally think about that is um, that she was trying to reaffirm or confirm to herself and in like maybe like a manipulative way, like reaffirm in his mind that she's a witness, not a suspect. You know what I mean? Yeah, I felt like she some of the ways she worded certain things was kind of like reminding them of her place at the table. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. That's a good way of saying it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay, here it is. I found it for you guys. Let's play it. <laughs> okay. I love this transcription stuff. Thank you to Bubbles, an armchair detective. She showed me how to do this <laughs> a long time ago. All right. Formerly of armchair detective, I should say. All right, here <laughs> we go. Okay, you live and you learn, Eb, and you know all that. Okay, here we go. So it's going to be about 20 seconds from when I start because, okay. you know, oops, hold it. I got to pull it into the stream first. Just one second, friends. Um, and... Let us know if there's any other questions. I don't know. I don't want you to have to like sit there and watch chat if it's not easy for you. But if you do see anything, Rose, just honey, go ahead and speak okay. on up okay. or, or whatever you're comfortable with. All right. Okay. So share. Great question, Sandy. So let's all listen to what Sandy was referring to. Okay. 
Twitter. Miniatures contact you, tell them no comment. It's like, please be nice to them. Like, you do not need to talk to them. It's like, I'm safe, I'm not in trouble, I'm in breaking laws. And I was just like, just send your love and support. And that was all I said to people. So, did that prompt all the phone calls of people going, no, Are you okay? They were prompting me. Right. That is why you? I did that because I didn't even want to like say that, but I was getting all sorts of texts from people that were like, Media is trying to contact me. I don't know what to do. I didn't tell them that I was a witness. I didn't tell them anything about that. It was just like, just say no comment. I need you to do this. Okay. And then a couple of my like super, super close friends, I asked them if they would be courteous enough to take all the pictures that we had of each other off Facebook and social media. And Wait, I'm going to let this keep playing for a minute because I think she says it another time with like a kind of different inflection right shortly after this. I might be wrong, but let me just play for another minute or so. Like, couple of really close friends. Is there any text messages between you and friends that reference anything that would be concerning regarding this case? No. Like talking about Chris? I think you've told me that you've never even really talked with my friends about him. No, and like my friend's dad died last night, like yesterday. I'm not worried about that. No, I know. But she started like, oh my God, she was really drunk She started like freaking out. She's like, I don't know what's going on in your life. She's like, I don't know if it pertains to this case. And she like just sent me like a screenshot of a news article of that Okay, case. hold it. She was yep. like, mm -hmm. okay, so here's another time when she says it again. Hold it. Let me get up there. Um, so 75 minutes would be like a minute and 15. Okay, wait, hold it. Is it like that? Yeah. Okay. Oops. Hmm. These people so that they're prepared or not. And he was just like, yeah, we'll do it. So I just called like my closest friends and I didn't say anything about the case or that I was a witness. I just told them, like, hey man, I need you to do this for me. Like, so she yeah, said it there again. I think there's more. Hold it. They take all the pictures that you have of us off the social media. I love you and I'm safe. And I didn't break any laws. Well, because they start freaking out. Like, what did you do? And I'm like, no, it's okay. You just help me, please. So. Yeah. Okay, I hold it. So. Wait, I think in here, I think we have another time when she says it. I like her just saying, I didn't break any laws. Yep, yep, yep. And there's no, oh gosh, there's, an, oh, there's so much to talk about, girlfriend. There's so much to talk about. <laughs> I can't even keep up with it. Okay, here we go. Let's hear right around now. And a narco he did too. I know he murdered his wife and kids. I know he was a dog. I know you're my best friend. I know you have a good heart. I know that you got it. that guy needs to go to jail and he will. I know you don't want publicity and neither would I. I know that as a witness, if you say anything, it oh, can cause a mistrial. I know you don't want that, neither do I. Fuck the media. I okay, that friend. was it, but I never fucking said anything to her about a trial. Okay. No, but she was just she, she was just reading she was just reading her she was just, let's listen to this because yeah. she, okay here she's reading to Kevin Kobach mm -hmm. her the messages between herself and Charlotte so let's just listen to this because she she's a whatever I, like legitimately I think this girl is so wrapped up in all the stuff that she's got going on right now that I don't yeah like her dad dying it's terrible she talks about you know, how by the way that she like talk charlotte girl we got a lot of love for you i'm yeah, sorry you're treated that like that because i asked her to mm -hmm. not talk to the media and it happened to me the day that the dad died and i'm sitting here trying to comfort her is this your best friend yeah this girl is like my whole world this girl's my whole world <laughs> but you're not talking about Children or your relationship with Chris or anything like that? No, the only time I ever mentioned him was like that one day. Okay. And I didn't even remember that I even had like said that to her. What's her phone number? Um, 
Seven, three, Sandy, that's a great point you so brought up. I'm not going to call her, but at some point, you might want to talk to her, just so you know. I mean, sooner or later, she's going to connect the dots. Or you're gonna John McSmith, her, right, take it easy. Friend. I'm not going to tell her. If she figures it out, she figures it out. Okay. Uh, if we were going to talk to her, I'd let you know beforehand. Is that fair? Yeah, just so I can give her a heads up. And she apologized to me because she was being kind of Oh my God. What? Did you just hear? She, she apologized what? to me a lot because she was being kind of crazy. Is it Charlotte Nelson owes this woman an apology? This I just know. makes me so sad. Charlotte, girl, come on over to watch the obsession. We got a lot yeah. of love for you, though. I'm sorry you were treated like this by your best friend. Wow. Seriously. Yeah, that's not a friend. No. So tell me about what? the new info that you remembered. Okay, um, see right here, hold on. Uh, she says, look, man, I know you work at Anadarko, he did too. I know he murdered his wife and kids. I know he was a dog. I know you're my best friend. I know you have a good heart. I know that you got it. that guy needs to go to jail and he will. I know you don't want publicity and neither would I. I know that as a witness, if you say anything, it can cause a mistrial. I know you don't want that, neither do I. Fuck the media, I want my best friend here. I am her fucking said anything to her about a trial. Okay. So, but see, look, she, she goes, just, she goes, I don't even care if you flirted with him or more. I know you had nothing to do with what happened, and I don't care if your job is having an open investigation. I'm not going to ask you a single question, but my pops died, and you're my best friend. Okay. And I said, please stop talking about that. And she said, what do you want, house arrest? And she just keeps saying, my father died. What the fuck? She was not okay last night, and I was just trying to, like, understandable mitigate this. Um... And I was like trying to calm her down. And I said, Charlotte, I'm trying so hard to be the best friend I can be right now. I said, I want to talk to you about that case. I didn't say the case. I said that case. Like I wasn't even affiliated with it at all. And you need to respect that. I'm here for you regarding your dad. You know this. And then she's but what's freaking right? out and freaking you out. You guys never had a conversation except for this past text messages about Chris and his children. No, that was it. Okay. That was it. That's fine. I mean, because he wasn't really something that I, like, super wanted everybody to know about. And I shouldn't have even mentioned it when she brought up what she had, like, going on sexually with her fiancé. And it it happened. But at that point... You guys are best friends. It's understandable. Yeah. See, and she keeps trying to talk about it. She says, if you're not under investigation by the police, I don't care. Why can't you attend your so-called best friend's father's death? It doesn't My God, me. seriously. Mm -hmm. This makes me she sad. Just like, her dad. Yeah, and she just is like freaking out. And finally, I just told her, you know, get that anyone would be. dad back. And that. Oh my God! What did she say? Getting mad isn't going to bring your dad. What did she say? I'm sorry. I don't know. I I I don't know. It's, it's so like falling. She's trying to talk about it. She says, if you're not under investigation by the police, I don't care. Why can't you attend your so-called best friend's father's death? It doesn't make sense to me. And all I told her was stop. She, she just like, dad. yeah, and she just is like freaking out. And finally, I just told her, you know, getting mad at me isn't going to bring your dad back. Oh, my God. Mm. When she She's abusive. Wow, well, she kind of went on She's another abusive. rant, but it had nothing to do with Chris. She's and abusive. Then, yeah, this is like such emotional abuse. This is absolute emotional abuse. This oh, is gosh. emotional abuse. It's like live and in living color. Oh, wow. isn't that so funny, Rose? It's horrible. <sighs> it's horrible when you really go back and listen to the words that are coming out of her foul mouth. What a disgusting human being. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, everybody, please be respectful in chat. I know, isn't that crazy? I yes. just. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm so, so guys, I, Charlotte Nelson, if ever you were to hear this on the very off chance, we are so sorry that you were treated that way seriously. Like, yeah. that is terrible. Yes. That is emotional abuse. Yes. And that's wrong. That is not a friendship. <laughs> if no, you're listening to us, that is not a friendship. You, you you were no way should you know feel guilty about not being there for her or any anything she says. That's right. It's just it's never gonna go in your it would never go in your favor, Charlotte. Even if your dad hadn't died, nothing was no. you're not you can't do anything good for this girl. She's no. just Charlotte, you deserve 
better people in your life. <laughs> I hope she got uh, away from her. I know. I hope so, too. And, you know, Sarah makes a great point. Lying to a federal officer is is in itself a crime. Yeah. Gosh. Now, all right. So, all right. I, I feel bad. I don't want to leave the, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to leave the, you know, the support for Charlotte, but, but we must here. So Charlotte, right. we got mad support for you, girl. So um, talking about, um, I don't know who just said something that, okay, made me think about it, but so what do you guys think of this document? So now when I, and I guess, you know, people had noticed this before it, it I had just noticed it you know, in the past couple months when I've been doing that kind of like deep dive research on the timeline of Miss Kessinger Sunday and Monday. So this, um, this, this, this part of the discovery records is recorded on form FD 1087 revision 5810. And when I did research that form, I don't know if you'd happen to know anything about this anaphylaxis or if this is you know just federal stuff um this form was often used when recording information about that was still is or was at some point classified now i'm not saying that this was so don't get me wrong here but this is the only time i believe in this discovery when this form fd 1087 was used what does that mean exactly? I researched it and researched it. I didn't get much further other than to find a lot of cases where there was classified information dealing with Donald Trump, dealing with, um, oh God, who is the attorney, the, uh, the, the, uh, I don't know, the lead attorney that, I don't know. I, I can't remember. I've just like blocked that all out of my mind, but on this document, you know, they are just talking about Miss Kessinger here. So we have um, under details, it says recorded interview of Nicole Kessinger protect identity on August 15th, 2018. So now this is on the Wednesday oh. um, that they first talked to her two days after the murders. And I have scrubbed this discovery and she is the only person in this whole 1960 pages of discovery documentation where after her name there is a note in capital letters protect identity she's the only one only one wow so i mean i don't and that's all i can tell you about it because i've did a lot of research and this was this was this was as far as i got is what i'm telling you now um so i does anybody have any thoughts what do you think about that rose i'm, I'm really i don't this is a this is really great that you even saw this How, i mean <laughs> this is mine you know, mind blowing to me. That when, well, I, when I first saw it, I that's how I felt about it. And then, you know, I've, um, oh gosh, uh, at Kelly, repeat. Do you, do you want me to say again what I just said, Joan? Or well, okay, so listen. So t somebody asked about witness protection. Now, in the interview that we have been listening to, um, I can pull it up for you. Hold it. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. With um, Kobach here, she asks about changing her name and she asks about the witness protection program. Um, and he says, well, I'm going to let, I'm going to, I'm going to let him say it because uh, I, I don't want to paraphrase because mm -hmm. Um, it's too important. <laughs> okay. So we have to go to 85. So 85 is one hour and 25 minutes. All right. Let me bring you there. So you guys can listen to it for yourself. One hour and 20. Thank you. Bubbles. <laughs> All right. Let me go back a little to give you a little context. Okay. Oh, hold it. I got to bring it to the stream. Hold it. One sec. Or is it already there? Okay, so I'm going to... So you guys see it? Capital letters, protected identity. What do you think? 
All right, let me pull the interview into the stream. Yeah, everybody's like, she. Did, why would? How was? She, how was she qualifying for witness yeah. protection? She wasn't. But here, so so so. I guess the point I'm making is what I have been able to conclude is this note protect identity, even with this information recorded on this form 1087 revision five something or other 2010. Mm -hmm. I've looked it up so many times, even though this is a form that is often used for recording information that was or still is classified. And I believe it's the only time it was used in this discovery. And it does say in capital letters, protect identity. It does not mean witness protection. So listen to what's said here. Okay. Be thankful for that. And I, we've, we've had this conversation. Is it, you know, you said you're thinking about going somewhere else? Go. I don't know if, when I'm going to do that. Can you guys help me with the name change? You like do that. I'm serious, please. So I can't do anything for you. If that's a legal process. It's, um, it's really not that difficult. Um, there's just paperwork that needs to be filled out. Uh, I think your best bet would just be to call uh, and maybe ask an attorney to help you with that or seek advice from, I don't even know who you. Yeah, they're going to say that, Molson, man, that he's going to basically say that witness protection makes no sense. Listen here. Call, um, honestly. But people change their name all the time when they get married. Um, so it's probably the county clerk, um, but it's going to, I think it would have to be at a state level to make a new change, but I don't know specifically how to do that. I don't. Does that like become public because that would defeat the purpose? I don't know. Um, I know you, it can be done. I just don't know how to do it and I wouldn't even know who to reach out. I mean, I could find out and let you know, but I don't know how to do it, um, you know, like the witness protection thing is very, very rare. I'm not expecting <clears throat> that. I'm, yes. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to hurt you, all those things. So. No, I'm not expecting that. I just, I don't even know. Like, sometimes I'm like, I just want to do it now. And I'm like, why? Because if, but if you go to another state. I feel like it would defeat the purpose. You know, a part of me, I just, I keep getting really scared that it's going to be really hard to find good employment for like a really long time, like years. I feel like people are going well, to hide. If you me. go to another state, this is not headlines in that state. You realize that. I mean, I, I, yeah, I do. And if I do a background on you. Joan, not that we know of. They didn't offer it, not that we know of. You're a good employee. It doesn't come up that you dated Chris Watts and you're involved in this case. It doesn't work that way. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Hey. I mean, I don't know. Jody is cool. Says if you watch NK and listen to her, it's like three different people. I 100% <laughs> it agree. It's, it's it like is. symbols. It's the movie. It stuff. is, mm. and it's in and it's in its borderline personality disorder, in my opinion, topped with a heavy dose of manipulation. Oh, she's so manipulative. Yeah. Oops. So. I just feel like this is just like one of those things that if it goes to court. Well, I mean, it's national right now, but it's not like, you know, it's not the theater event that happened in Aurora seven years ago, right? That everybody in the world knew about. It's not that. So I certainly for you, you're under the microscope and you, you're feeling it. And nothing can, anybody can say can change that for you. So I get it. But I don't, I think you need to just step back for a minute. Yeah, so we, um, one time, Elizabeth, good comment here, says, um, if it was mob case or RICO, you get witness protection. That's exactly right. So we right. did, um, actually, one of my moderators, ADHD Life, I don't know if you're here, and somebody else had, did some research on this for the channel. I did a little bit myself, but they did the most of it, um, where, you know, very simply, witness protection is for people, a, a person who... If not for their testimony, the defendant likely would not have been convicted. So their testimony must exist 
we were unclear if it needed to be, if it could be in a, um, if it had to be in a trial or if it could be in a, you know, a, oh gosh, what's it called? But yeah. And I think trial being the key word, right? Exactly. Right. Yes. And it has to be a material factor in the conviction of, it would of course always have to be a felon because if the crime did not rise to the level of felony, you know, I think it would be hard to make the case that right. there was a threat that would warrant witness protection, which is, of course, very costly. And I think it's my understanding, and I'm just, this is off the cuff me saying this, that our system wants to kind of hold that in a, in a sacred class of its own where it's not available to everybody who's just like this visit here, you know? Right. right. Hi, Sheila. Welcome. Yeah. So... Oh, good Jeez. Lord. <laughs> this this is a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. Um, demonic oppression, you know, possibly with Watts. I mean, a, there's, you know, possession, oppression, um, uh, obsession with the demonics. Don't like to talk mm -hmm. about it that much, but mm -hmm. it, I, I don't rule it out personally. You can't rule it out. Can't rule it out. Oh my goodness, Sheila! Better late than yeah. Happier here, Sheila. Welcome. Yeah. Oh, I know. Pray for peace. Oh, Seriously, Shanann, Sh Shanann, Bella, Cece, and Nico murdered. She's googling about a book deal. She is nasty. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Um, and then who says some R says to you? Curious. Oh, yeah, we were, we were um, to the oh my mind. Yeah, the EVPs. Oh my gosh. I know. Oh, goodness. Holly asked, Do y'all think they could have retrieved those picks? What what picks her the pic she was sending him in the secret calculator? Is that what we're asking if they were retrieved? I, I thought they were. No. Um, yeah, I think I think that they were. Um, I think there's that no they make in, notation yeah. to it in this yeah, they do right yeah i mean they, they know that they're there right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um oh she know. said she totally said text i mean oh okay holly what do you what's what are you asking holly well, then do you think they were able to retrieve all the texts Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was actually just mentioning this. I have an attorney friend who, um, you know, I eventually, after begging him for a long time to look yeah. at the discovery and to talk to me about some issues, because um, he's a brilliant legal mind and he's a criminal, he's a criminal defense attorney. And he has a, he founded a non for profit that does a lot of really good work. He's very active. He knows all the law, all the laws, every single one of them. He knows them all. <laughs> um, he did talk to somebody who was very, very close to this case who, you know, I think a lot of things were said between he and this person. He did not tell me all of them because, you know, some of them maybe were discussed in the confidentiality of lawyer between lawyer. I don't know what kind of confidentiality they have between themselves, to be honest, but I just know that he didn't tell me everything because he got a little weary of people I was associating with on YouTube and where the information might go. And we have since talked about this and, you know, it's all good. That's personal. But one thing he did disclose to me was that all of all nearly like the bulk share by far, if not all of the communications between Chris Watts and his former mistress were in fact recovered. And um, he told me that definitively. And I didn't ask any further just because of the way um, things kind of went. Um, with him being a friend of mine for 20 years and yeah. the whole thing getting involved in YouTube, blah, 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 blah. But I'm pretty sure of it. Yeah. Wow. So I guess the same reason Casey Anthony was let go, says Holly. So Casey Anthony, I think, was let go. Well, because I think my opinion is or that Casey Anthony was let go because um, the, the prosecution didn't prove their case, right? Like they didn't. They yeah, had a, they she had a trial. Yeah, she had a trial. Yeah. yeah, well, she had a trial. Yeah. yeah, and they did not, they did not, um, they did not roll out a case that rose to the occasion. They just didn't. Right. Um, 
And they, they left areas of reasonable doubt substantial enough for a jury. And those jurors have since spoken out. This is actually something I'd really love to cover. I think a lot of it is. I mean, she had a showboater of a lawyer too. Yeah, she sure did. (laughs) And they, yeah, they, you know, they, they, they failed in bringing the case. Whereas these juries who jurors, who many of them, the judge has said that they, in their hearts, you know, their hearts, say that the woman is guilty, but when they were, the the jury instructions were handed down and they followed those jury instructions to the letter as they are told to do. And they did as they were told to do. They did not feel that the case brought forth by the prosecution, um, you know, it, it didn't clear the bar. It left reasonable doubt. Mm-hmm. And according to the jury instructions that they all say that they took very seriously, they could not rightfully convict her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Jose Baez. I was trying to think of his name. Jose Baez. Taquito. <laughs> Maybe Taquito needs Jose. Uh, like, he was something. He was. Oh, man. And he was not even much of an attorney before that, but he, he made a mark right. for himself. He did. He did a good job. I mean, yeah, he he, he had a, he had a strategy. Up. He executed that strategy, and yep. yeah. Oh God, Holly, I watched the makeup tutorial video today. Don't do it again. Don't torture yours. I know. Don't it's, it's do a it. Tough one. I know. It is a tough I one. I wanted to watch that with, but then uh, all this stuff has come up, and yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I know we had such plans. Yeah. Everybody, be cool and chat. Don't stir the pot too much, John. You don't want to lose your favorite channel subscribers. <laughs> um, Wilson Man says, I watched the Anthony case on Court TV, and I'll be honest, if I were a juror on the case, I would have voted not guilty too. Yeah, Wilson Man, you know, I was um, very, I, like, I think we probably all were. I mean, the little baby girl. We, I, so I was so emotionally involved in that case, like so many other people. I don't think I would have said so at the time, but you know, looking back mm-hmm. now, being a little older and more mature, I, yeah, I think so too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Jennifer says, well, you know, that's how the system is supposed to work, no matter how the public feels, and that's right. I mean, yeah. you know, there's the standards. You know, the attorneys know what they're supposed to do. There's a certain level of evidence that you must present, and there is a, you know, there there are standards that you need to reach for a jury to find right. to remove that reasonable doubt. And if if you can't do it, you can't do it. And sometimes it's a matter of crappy representation and. Like, that's what's up. I know. It's mm-hmm. terrible. I know. Or really, in the OJ case, you're really good representing your dream team. I know. You know, I was talking about that just the other day with my dad. My son and I were over there. My my dad, my stepmom in the pool. I, oh, I know. We were talking about. Oh, I was asking him some questions for, you know, this channel. My dad is an attorney. He was, um, he was, the ADA. Yeah. He was the ADA here for like. 25 years. He's, he's, wow. he's practiced all kinds of law. And somehow we were talking about the OJ trial and he was just saying, you know, the one mistake. And he said, you know, like, this is how it goes with the like, trials, you know, trials are, you know, they're so robust, but at the same time, they're such delicate things. Mm-hmm. If the, you know, if the, you know, Marsha Clark, the prosecution they never should have allowed for him to try on that glove in front of the jurors. Now, first of all, O.J. Simpson is quite a colorful character. And, you know, he was a performer. He was an actor. There was no way with his life being on the line that that glove was going to fit on his hand, you know. And, right. you know, the prosecution Chris, did not have Chris, to allow. Yeah, right. That was Chris yeah. Darden's mistake. He really felt like... That was going to seal them with getting right. Yeah, yeah. Marcia Clark right. wasn't that's on right. board with that. She did not. That's want- right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. We couldn't when we were talking. We couldn't remember. Chris yeah. Thank so you, it, Rose. You, we couldn't you, remember. Yeah. It was name. very yeah. sad. That was like it's painful to watch for Marcia in my eyes because. Yeah. We had that conversation with Chris Dard, and this is I don't want this done. I don't. That's think right. It's a good idea. Just spoken about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And you know he says with you know all you know all of the volumes and the volumes of evidence he you know he believes if that decision was made differently if he had list if Chris Darden had listened to Marsha Clark and they yep. didn't do that in front of the jury that there was yes. no way in hell 
that that jury would have allowed that man to walk free, right. you know, he, his opinion and, you know, and he explained it in a much more sophisticated manner than I'm mm -hmm. explaining it to you right now. Well, but no, I, 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 mean, I, I hear it. I hear it. Yeah. Cause it was just yeah. that that's all you needed was, was that, that one error of doubt. Yeah, you right, exactly. You can't go forward. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So okay. Meg McSee says, um, do you have a relationship with your dad? Cause guest yeah, host. Yeah. Oh, girlfriend. I would love for my dad to guest host. My dad, let me tell you about my dad. My dad is the kind of person who <laughs> believes like you shouldn't text message because you, other than like, what should I get at the grocery store tonight, honey? Because <laughs> <laughs> anything that you put into, or let's even go to an email or a text message can and will be used against you at a later date, you know? So um, him being on YouTube. Oh, hells no but i wish because he's really bad, you know yeah so yeah yeah no i, I got you but yeah so i will just you know i, I will can i saw i sometimes will repeat you know here things that he's told me when i've you know saw advice from him on various legal aspects but he's mm -hmm. a hard like, to crack even knowing that you know i have this youtube channel i'll ask him something he's like is this going to end up on YouTube? Is this going to end up on YouTube? And I'm going to end up this bar. <laughs> I love that. That's great. He was a lawyer. Did he still a lawyer at the end of the day? Oh my God. No doubt. So, I mean, that's, that's the thing. And like, and like my friend Alex, who, you know, I've gotten, I've talked about this case with, and you know, he, we don't even talk about it anymore because of some unfortunate things that happen, but you know, he, you know, getting him to actually come on the channel versus getting him to have a conversation with me and giving me some insight into material I could present to y'all on the channel are two different things. It was never on the table for him to come on to the channel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess, and yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying that. I mean, notice how many lawyers there are out there and notice how few lawyers are on our YouTube channels talking about these cases case closed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're just, they know, they know better. I mean, there really is, there is an issue of, you know, of holding their license, of maintaining their bar status. And there is an issue of them, you know. That's why saying, I'm shocked that my friend is one of the lawyers that did the Reels documentary on Chris Watts. From oh. I sent you the link. That's on right. Yeah. Oh my, honey, I totally had forgotten about that. I'm so sorry. Yes. That I've, been, I've gotten a lot of that's right. That's yeah. right. Oh, I have to go watch that again. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's right. A curious yeah. rose friend is yeah. can you tell them the story, honey. It is. His he's attorney Jarrett Ferentino grew up. It's my one of my brother's good really close friends. He is one of the uh -huh. three lawyers that did the um the narrative documentary on the Chris on Chris Watts case for Reels Network. Yeah, that's yep. so crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Crime Weekly, Sarah. Oh, and by the way, Utter Nutter just um, dropped the link to a Curious Rose channel. Oh, People, thank you. Go thank subscribe. you, Utter. And um, Sarah says that would Crime Weekly has a good series on Amber Heard. Sweet. I'm there. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, John, let's give John some spotlight here. OJ told them both he was done footing the bill for mm -hmm. their crack pinches. Oh, mm -hmm. jeez. And then we take the spotlight away. <laughs> I'm just kidding, John. We love you. <laughs> I just don't know the context there. That's all. I'm just kidding. They invited OJ to cookouts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He became oh a part God. of. That's I so don't know how he did it, but he was able to somehow. That is so crazy. Have, you know, a lot of sympathizers. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, let's get Curious Rose to a thousand subscribers. Yeah, Definitely you. do it. So there's the link. Everybody, everybody go subscribe. And you too. You know, Joan, I, I, in fact, I just talked to my brother over the weekend about it because my brother said, because um, I said, is he, you know, I know where they, I mean, I'd go to his house and knock on the door. And he, my brother said that last he spoke to him, Jarrett was, had an agent in LA and was looking into oh. acting. So I don't know. Oh. I have to look and see if he's even here. Oh, um, wow. Oh my gosh. Well, he will come I, on the channel. Heck yeah. yeah. Cause I was very impressed by him. Just document. I, you, you grow up with somebody, you don't look at them. You know, he's sure. an attorney. Sure. He's successful, but to see him doing it in a different way, I was really, 
I couldn't believe I was highly impressed by it. And my, Absolutely. Brother, and my brother, that's what he said. It was last year. He said, I, I think he's looking into the acting aspect of it now. Oh, wow. That's terrific. Yeah. Oh, so um, yeah. I'll thank you. Pray for peace. So I'll have thank to look and see even where he is, but I would love, my God, I would love to get him on, on over here. Kel. That would be fantastic. But and I like, just have to, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sweetheart. No, but it's like, there are still lawyers. So I don't know. <laughs> That's Maybe right. he come on because he's looking right. to do more acting than a, a, you know attorney yeah. type work. We'll, I'll see what I can if I can find anything. Well, tell him he can come on here. We can, we can role play. We'll give yeah, him that. Yeah, that would be. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Now I just have to do a retraction. Sarah says no, silly silly goose. Aaron Hernandez, not Aaron. Oh, that, oh, that broke Well, my... I mean, but who oh, is the A H of the moment? You know. <laughs> Yeah, because I was just going to say she uh, just did an, an interview, the full interview. She will be on. They just released some of it yes Monday morning on uh, today. She, it's going to be the full interview Friday night on Dateline. I want to say which which one? It, Amber which Heard. Interview? Oh, she, they did oh, a full interview. Damn. Yeah, they released some of it this morning, and she of course, oh, you know, she's not. Yeah, she's I blaming. Get on top of that, oh boy, yeah. I got to get on top of that one. It's really, oh, yeah, yeah. Start watching it. They only released a little bit of it this morning, oh, but the full boy. interview will be on Friday evening. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, so. I know. All right, my friends. Well, listen, it's midnight. Well, it's 11.58 and at 12 o'clock midnight, I turn into a pumpkin. So on work nights. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It is a Monday night. So, yeah. So we do, you know, we have a lot of questions. I don't know. I think we have maybe more questions than we started. Do we have more answers? Definitely not. Never. Never. Um, oh, wait. Ari says, hold it. She blames Johnny Depp stardom as her reason for... Um, losing? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, that's so crazy. Oh, boy. Okay. So anyway, so thank you so much, moderators. You guys are all awesome. Thank you so much, Curious Rose. Thank love you. having you love as a guest. Here. Thank you so much. You're the best. Thank you best, so best. much. You're the best. <laughs> Kelly, I love you. And love you too, sweetie. And thank you so much, chat and everybody and everybody watching the replay for being respectful and for supporting the channel. Please do hit like, subscribe, and click on that bell so you get the notifications. And um, yeah, so I don't know if you have ideas on what you would like to see covered for the next topic, let me know because even just from by anaphylaxis, even just, you know, from tonight's live stream and the various topics we covered there are plenty of <laughs> no most men it's good you've got your theme song no matter what um there are plenty of things that we could follow up on so if you do um have any preferences she's go ahead and pop them in the chat or you can always sure. email me and i'm so sorry guys i know i owe a few of you emails i'm been since i went back into on site at work i've been a little behind i apologize um but you can email me at watsobsession at gmail.com. And I promise I will do my best to get back to you. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, girl. All right. You, good everyone. night. Have a great week. And I'll talk <laughs> right. to you during yes. the week. Bye, all. Awesome. All right, everyone. Be safe. Love ya. Take care, guys. Um, Nilda, I just saw your question. I don't, I not, don't know for sure. Maybe like probably Wednesday or Thursday. So, um, usually around 9 PM Eastern daylight time. So, you know, um, something like that. I'm sorry that I don't know right now because with the family and the job and all that stuff, sometimes it can get hard to schedule too far in advance. I like to try to do the night before. So I'm saying probably Wednesday or Thursday. So click the bell. So you get the um, notifications and just in case you don't get the notifications, you know, just, just pass through the channel every now and then. So if you do want to be in the live stream, you will know for sure it's going on because StreamYard and YouTube sometimes don't deliver you all the notifications you want. That's not true guys, just for this channel. I understand this is true for like lots of channels. So if there are channels for which you really want to catch those live streams, make sure you just go and um, go check in. Okay. Let's see. Um, Lauren, I think another huge problem with this case is that Chris Watts um, says he put the girls in the tanks with no PPE. There are clear guidelines with, yeah, yeah, 
when dealing with, yeah, I, I know this is something that we have discussed before. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we've had some pretty in-depth discussions on that. I think what I do, and this is a really great point that you bring up, Lauren, thank you for bringing that up. Um, I need to find someone who's like a true legit expert on, you know, like this industry, the oil tanks and PPE. If I love you too, Water Nutter, sweetheart. Um, if anybody knows such person, please send them our way. Um, because that's the only way to bring you guys more answers. I think without having that expert, um, opinion ringing in, you know, we're only going to get so far, you know what I mean? So yeah, but great, great question. Thank you so much. Um, utter Kelly curious has an expert. Oh, uh, Kelly curious has an expert. He is willing to go up with you. Kelly curious has an expert curious Rose. Say that again, utter nutter. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin B, if um ever if he ever wants to talk to that issue, like definitely for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know, John. Well, you know what I mean. Oh, thank you, Rose, honey. I'm glad you could make it. How are you doing? How's the move doing and how's everything going? Yes. Wait, so you said Kelly Curious has an expert. Curious Rose has an expert. Okay, so I should ask Curious Rose on the oil on the oil fields. Um, Lauren, so uh, John, do you think, so John, this is to you. John, do you think he would have been affected by opening the hatches with no mask or protection? He is Rose's friend. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a little slow. Okay, I'm going to text her and ask her right now. Thank you so much, Utter Nutter. I'm going to follow up on that right now. 